continue standing as the cultural vanguard of West Java, Indonesia, nourishing the intellectual life of the nation, working for the benefit of the global world. This is Universitas Pajajaran. Inspired by the vision of the Asia-Africa Conference, attended by representatives of 24 countries, the establishment of the university was the realization of the vision of the cultural figures of West Java to found an institution of higher learning in the cosmopolitan city, to educate and set forth to society dedicated and qualified individuals. Today, UNPAD has broadened its wings to encompass various disciplines and multidisciplinary academic endeavors through the efforts of 16 faculties and one postgraduate school. To achieve its mission to build the capacity to adapt and innovate in the face of the rapid development of science and technology at the international level, UNPAD is determined to become the center of research and innovation for the good of the nation and the world by continuously nourishing research and developing technology to create innovations in various disciplines. Currently, 36,000 students are registered at UNPAD, and more than 200 international students are registered in different programs, degree and non-degree. As an effort to constantly improve the quality of education, Universitas Pajajaran is supported by approximately 2,100 professional faculty members with reputable qualification. To achieve the goals of its mission, UNPAD has also established notable research centers, which demonstrate serious commitment to and focus on achievements in a number of strategic fields, such as the Center for Sustainable Development Goal Studies, the Center for Environmental and Sustainability Sciences, the Academic Health System, the Center for the Digitalization and Development of Sundanese Culture, the Center for Innovation and Pharmaceutical Services, the Center for Nanotechnology and Graphene Research, to name a few. Equipped with a central science laboratory network and a science and technology complex in the Center for the Development of Science and Technology on the main campus, Universitas Pajajaran has risen in its role as a leader in higher learning geared towards innovation. UNPAD also fosters collaboration with other institutions involving all stakeholders. Universitas Pajajaran commits in providing benefit and service for the good of humanity and the preservation of the environment. This is a great enterprise which cannot be done alone. UNPAD believes that in the spirit of collaboration, this vision may be achieved. We invite you who have the same vision a good intention to care for human life and the environment all over the world, to work with us, build collaborations, create a better world together. Universitas Pajajaran grew out of the community and has made it its duty to give back not only in the form of the dissemination of knowledge and information, but also through socially responsible activities such as student fieldwork, community outreach programs, and action research seeking to make direct impact on the community. With its feet firmly grounded in the local communities and environment, UNPAD is also making great efforts to take steps towards internationalization. It offers special programs for international students to maintain its global network and make its strategic and reputable place on the world map of higher education. As a site for the personal development of young minds and bodies, UNPAD supports a wide variety of student activities.
Unpad also provides students with libraries with an extensive collection of books, periodicals, and study materials, comfortable dormitories, health and fitness services, free on-campus transportation, and other supporting facilities which Unpad continuously upgrades and improves. While being committed internationally recognized quality research, UNPAD maintains also its dedication in preserving traditional cultures as the compass for all of UNPAD's activities on and off campus. As of now, UNPAD have set forth unto society 200,000 graduates in various fields of work, including strategic government sectors and crucial multinational industries. works for the good of society, bringing innovations and sincere contributions to humanity. Universitas Pajajara, the pride of West Java, working for the benefit of the global world. Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran. Are you interested in learning about cleft lip and palate with experts from around the world? And you can learn this for free while gaining three credits. Come join our online course in collaboration with Faculty of Dentistry, Universitas Pajajaran, and Smart Train. Greetings from Transcendent 2021. Massive open online course in cleft lip and palate held by Faculty of Dentistry Universitas Pajajaran collaborating with Smile Trend and YPPCBL has been going on for a few days. Let me introduce myself. My name is Rashid Abdulaziz. I am a student from Faculty of Dentistry Universitas Pajajaran. I see that we came from different countries, so I think it is appropriate to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone here. Greetings to Professor Aziz Butalib from colleague of dentistry, the University of Iowa, United States. How are you, Professor? Fine, good morning. Thank you for being here. It's been an honor, a pleasure, and we really appreciate your presence here. Thank you for giving your time. We also have Professor Ani Melani Maskun from Universitas Pajajaran as our moderator. Mm -hmm. Hello, Professor Ani, how are you? Hi. Hi. Thank you. Uh, what's your name? Rashid, Professor. Rashid, Rashid, you are my student, right? Yes, right, Professor Ali. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for being here, Professor. Uh, you're welcome. And then, uh, good morning, Iowa. Good morning, uh, Professor Aziz. Good evening, Professor Ani. Yeah, good uh, evening here, everyone. And uh, today we, uh, we are going to show your, uh, the, 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 the event is for QA of the lecture from uh, Professor uh, Aziz. And all the students has uh, uh, learned your lecture. And uh, we have some question. Yeah, maybe, uh, Yes, you professor. will, uh, yeah. You yes. will show, you will show the question first. Yeah, uh, Professor Ani. But first of all, uh, I'd like to greet uh, to all of the participants. Uh, thank you for participating in this course, and thank you for attending this live discussion. So maybe uh, in the beginning, I will explain a short description about this live discussion. Maybe the participants. Uh, didn't know about this live discussion. So, so Professor Anian from Professor Aziz Putali, today is our third live discussion. Uh, on the previous live discussion, we were discussing about the introduction of cleft lip and pallet with Professor Adeto Kunbo Adebula and developmental anatomy 
uh, of craft lab and pellet with Professor Titus. So now we are going to discuss about gene identification and molecular genetics in cleft lip and pellet with Professor Aziz Butali. So this live discussion will be separated into two sessions. The first session, the professor will be answering the question that has been filled out by the participant in the MOOC website. And the question will be presented on the screen. Uh, I think uh, all of the other participants uh, that are not here, it is around 300 participants. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, they have uh, already watched your lectures as well. And in the second session, the participant will have the opportunity to ask the question directly to the professor through the comment section. So the participants can write down the question, their name and where they are coming from. Yeah. Okay, Professor Rani, uh, now I, I would like to give the spotlight to you as our moderator and Professor Aziz Butali as our speaker. Professor Rani may start the first session and leads to the live discussion. Thank you so much. We can move on into the first session. Okay, thank you, Rani. Uh, the first session uh, will the, have a first question. Are there specific gene implicated in the cleft lip and pellet patient? This is a question from Samuel Ade Tunji, University of Benin Teaching Hospital, Nigeria. Okay, it's in your country. <laughs> okay, uh, please, uh, um, Professor Aziz, can you answer the question? Yes. So there are several genes that have been implicated in both syndromic and non-syndromic forms of clefts. Yes. Um, and using different techniques to identify them. And some of these genes have been validated in multiple populations. So yes, there are specific genes for cleft lip and palate. However, we still think there's still more to be discovered because cleft lip and palate is polygenic, means so many genes are involved and they could be working in different pathways. So there are specific genes and possibly pathways involved in theft from pilots. Okay, uh, yeah, sure. There are uh, two kinds of uh, cleft lip and pellet, uh, syndromic and non-syndromic. The yes. mostly genetic is non-syndromic, non right? Yeah. In both, in both, both of yeah, them. Yeah have genetic causes. The syndromic has both genetic and environmental. The non-syndromic has both genetic and environmental. But yeah. so there's genetics involved in both of them. However, in the syndromic is mainly Mendelian. In other words, most of the time is one gene. And in a few times, maybe one or two genes. But in the non-syndromic, it is polygenic, means there are so many genes yeah, involved. So many gene involved here. Okay. okay. Uh, next question. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, could you elaborate uh, more on possibility to detect CLP from gene identification? What is the initial characteristic of a baby? Will be cleft lip or cleft palate? And which is the best method for gene identification for detecting C CLP? Thank you. From Farah Nuro Salsabila, Universitas Pajajaran Indonesia. Please. So, um, so cleft, cleft lip itself is the incomplete closure of the lip, right? And different from cleft palates. And they could occur separately all together. So some kids can be born with lip only, some kids can be born with palate only, some kids can be born with cleft lip and palate. And it could be on one side, it could be on both sides. So um, so the, those are the characteristics. So, the, it's, so they have a spectrum of phenotype from just the lip to either palate or lip and palate. So it's not just one or either of them. Uh, kids could be born with any of the phenotype. Now to detect uh, the best method, the best method depends on one, what is the clinical presentation, okay? 
and what is the expertise of the person investigating? What is the technology available to you? And what is the cost? Is it for research or is it for diagnosis, clinical diagnosis? So let me start with, in terms of the family structure. If, a, if you have a family where you have multiple people affected, your technique might be to start with linkage. In other words, to try and see if you can map out genes in that family. If you have a family where only one person is affected and you have so many families like that, you could decide to use a different method. Now, it's either you screen for the genes that are, people know before, that have been published before, and screen for variants in this new family. Or if you have a large enough family, you could do what is called genome-wide association analysis where you're gonna be comparing the polymorphisms in the cleft families with the polymorphisms in those without clefts. And using a statistical analysis, you'll be able to identify regions of the genome that are significantly associated. That's a different technique. Another technique is you could screen the entire genome, which is called whole genome sequencing. So again, like I said, depends on the technology, <clears throat> excuse me, the expertise, the family structure <clears throat> and the clinical information. So I wouldn't say there's the best um, approach. All I would say is start with the clinical presentation because if you miss the clinical presentation, the genetics will be wrong. So first understand the clinical presentation. So that's the way I'm going to answer that. <clears throat> so next question. Yeah, thank you. And then Next question. Once we found out uh, through gene identification that a baby is going to be born with a CLP, is there any intervention or modification that we can do to maybe reduce or prevent this from happening? Is yeah, so so that's okay. our ultimate goal, to be able to prevent a child from being born with clefts. That's where we are going. However, we are not there yet. We don't have enough information to get to that point. So, our, um, so right now, if you do make a diagnosis of clefting that the child is going to be born with clefts, it will help with counseling. You can start preparing the mother yeah. for the birth of that child. It's very important because the mother can have a shock about the delivery of the, of the facial presentation of the child. So the diagnosis, prenatal diagnosis helps with counseling. Now, if we're able to understand the genetics very well, of course, technology has really advanced where we can start applying things like CRISPR, where we change the polymorphism, but we're not there yet. We're still far from that. Also, people have done pre-surgical correction before the child is born in utero, surgical correction in utero before the child is born. But the ultimate goal is to prevent the child from having clefts at all. That requires us understanding the genetics. And sometimes it could be that we need to modify the lifestyle of the mother. So that's why we advise that any woman of childbearing age must, be, must avoid smoking, whether passive or active, Okay. Any exposure to teratogens or to, to medications that are not prescribed. Because during three months before pregnancy and the first three months of pregnancy, the period is called periconceptional period. A woman is at risk of having a child with cleft when they're exposed to matters of smoking, alcohol, or other teratogens. So that's how you can prevent it, even though you have the genetic risk. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Avoid the uh, environment uh, the factor, right? Yeah, yeah. smoking yeah. and teratogenic. Smoking and teratogenic, yeah. Okay, next question. What kind of diet that are usually associated with epigenetic changes in the human genome? Good question. So what kind of diet? So it's difficult to say mm. exact kind of diet, but I can tell you that Everything in terms of environmental exposure, including diet, has an effect on the epigenome. Now, to what extent? So let me give an example. I'll use an example to explain this. So there was farming in Netherlands in the 70s. That means 
they didn't have enough food to eat, right? The absence of diet. The effect of that affected multiple generations up until the late 90s or early 2000s, when kids that were, their parents were exposed to famine, started having metabolic diseases like diabetes and obesity. So diet has an effect on the epigenome. And if you remember the epigenome itself, it's not a change in nucleotide. It is whether the gene is turned on or off at a particular time. So things like smoking and diet affect the epigenome. So if you say what part of what kind of diet, any diet could affect it, but is it positive effect or negative effect? Is it turning the gene on when the gene is supposed to be off or turning the gene off when it's supposed to be on? Those are the concerns about effect of diet on epigenome. And the absence of diet also affects the genome, like famine as well. Okay. Thank you for answer. Uh, I think the uh, effect to methylation, right? Yeah. Question, next question. That's all? Uh, all right. Can I ask a question, Prof? Oh, okay. Uh, so, show your video. Yeah, uh, so yeah okay. my name is Shifra Biandra. I'm from University of Pajajaran. So I listened to the answer for the gene identification in CLP, and you mentioned about advancement of gene identification and what uh, are your goals and aim in the field, right? So could you please explain more about it because it is uh, interesting. And what is the most research topic right now? Uh, in the in that, I didn't get the question. I, I was you had some background noise. Can you say that again? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, what is the most research topic in the field right now to uh, help more in the modification of CLP before birth? So what is the research regarding modification of CLP before birth? I didn't get it. Yes, yeah. Uh, because you mentioned about you mentioned about it uh, before. Okay, okay. I see. What, okay, so the most advanced way to identify gene right now is called old genome sequencing. That means you can look at all the nucleotides. So you have six billion nucleotides in the human genome. So there's a technology that allows you to look at all of them in, in each individual. Before we're not able to do that, but there's a technology. And when you screen for that, you're looking for either polymorphisms that are common or variants that are rare that affect the protein function of a gene, <clears throat> the, 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 coding, the coding function of the gene, then it affects, the, it, it leads to the phenotype like cleftin. So that's the most advanced technology, which is the old genome sequencing. So what's the other part of the question? I think that's it, right? The most research topic is to look for genetic causes of non-syndromic clefts. Because syndromic clefts, we understand most of them. We already identified the genes. But for non-syndromic clefts, we don't really know all the genes that are playing a role or the pathways that are critical for the formation of the face and thereby understand the prevention of clefting. So that's what we're trying to understand, to understand all the genes that play a role in clefting. That's still an ongoing research. Thank you, Prof, uh, for the answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Professor, for the answer. Uh, maybe for another participants, uh, you can ask directly uh, by open your video and open your mic. So I think uh, there's another question from Muhammad Irshad. Uh, I am Muhammad Irshad from IIUM. Can I ask about the research that had been done to identify the cause of CLP? I read some articles online that some of the research has was done on mice. Is there any other animals or ways that had been used to identify the cause of CLP? Yes. yes. So we, apart from, so apart from looking for the variants in humans, 
We also, you can also test for the, to identify genes in through using animal models like the mice, zebra fish, um, the frog, and some people have used the dog and the pig. Okay, those are, they've all used all that for cleft research. But the ones that is used most of the time is the mice because the human genome and the mice genomes are over 90% the same and conserved. Okay, so you understand that easily. But zebra fish is being used currently because of the rapid use of it. You can easily get the fish and then generate the data you need to do and then observe the phenotype. So yeah, different animal models have been used to understand clefting and to identify genes and also to confirm the role of some genes in clefting. So yeah, several animals and models have been used. And also cells, not just animals, you can use cells like cell lines to test for the function of some human variant. I hope that answers the question. Profani is still muted. Uh, thank you, Professor. I think Profani. Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, the next question is: I would like to ask: uh, Are the genes that implicated in the cleft lip, isolate cleft palate, and cleft lip and palate all the same? Thank you, Prof. Okay, good question. Oh, yeah, right. So, so some genes are only found in individuals with cleft palates only. Some are found in individuals with cleft lip and palates, and some are found in individuals with both cleft lip and palate and cleft palate only. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. So like the gene uh, <clears throat> VAX7, VAX1, MAFB, IRF6 have been found in cleft lip and palate. So the gene GLHL3, CTNN, a2 and salt 2A1 have been found in cleft palate only. Oh. Well, gene, uh, the gene FOXY1 has been found in all forms of cleft. So again, it's so there are genes that are associated with certain forms of cleft, while others are associated with all forms of cleft. That's why it's important to look at all the phenotypes, not just one phenotype because cleft palate has a different genetic etiology from cleft lip and palate and from cleft lip only. Most times cleft lip only and cleft lip and palate have the same etiology, but yeah. cleft palate only has a different genetic yeah. etiology. Okay. Okay, Matiara, yeah. Um, next, any question? <clears throat> Is that this all? Uh, excuse me, Professor. Can I ask the question? Okay. Go ahead, Rashid. Okay. Rashid, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, professor, uh, I have some question. Uh, I see that there are a developing research about human genomic project, uh, human sequencing. And I'm asking what is your opinions on the future of gene gene therapy and how it will affect the treatment of cleft lip, cleft lip and palate patients. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you. Yeah, so gene therapy is very good. And for diseases like sickle cell, it has really helped so many kids yeah. and it's you know, yeah. keep helping kids in the or world. Thalassemia. <laughs> thalassemia as well. Yes, yes, right. However, those are single gene, right, defects. But when you're talking about cleft, you know, I remember I talked about polygenic. You have so many genes. So how do you use gene therapy when you have so many genes? So the, the best approach is if we can identify the critical pathway where all those genes play a role, if you're able to identify the pathway, that pathway becomes a critical one. Then if you have a variant in that pathway, if you're able to correct that variant, that is a better way to correct cleft using genetic information, but not gene therapy, because gene therapy yeah, is better for one disease gene. But yeah. for clefting, it's polygenic. So it's not, it's not going to be the future for clefting. The future for clefting is, can we identify that critical pathway and that variance 
that if you have the variant, you are going to have cleft. Then we can correct for that variant using CRISPR. There's a technology called CRISPR where you can change the polymorphism back to normal. It's called CRISPR, right? Now, that's where we're going. That's where the, we are, this information we're learning is taking us to. But before you get to translation, before you get, get to treatment, discovery is the most important part. Once you discover, you can then have a good understanding, then you can move it to translation. So gene therapy is good, but not appropriate for cleft lip, yeah. Thank you so much, Professor. Yeah, thank you, Professor. And any question? Any more question? Enough? Um, I think there are some questions in the chat box. Chat box? Yeah. If uh, no more question, may I have, I have, one question for you, uh, Professor uh, yeah. Adis, yeah. Uh, you mentioned about the uh, smoking uh, link to yeah. epigenetic, yeah. Uh, my question is, um, what is the effect uh, from uh, smoking to epigenetic? It is the... Uh, Effect to uh, enzyme, which is uh, make the methylation or something. Yeah, like it could it. affect the methylation profile. Yeah, you know some. So naturally, during development, some genes are turned on at certain times time point, while some yeah. genes are turned off. Right, okay. and methylation is what allows the gene to be turned off. Right, okay. now smoking could affect the methylation profile where whereby the genes that are supposed to be turned off are turned on. Okay. And when they are turned on at the wrong time, they, yeah. they function inappropriately and that will contribute to the phenotype. So okay. that's one way smoking acts. Another way smoking acts is it could be through interacting with some genetic functional gene environment interaction, whereby you have a genetic risk and you just need the environmental risk to, to push you to have the disease. Okay. So it could go through the epigenetic re, um, route, which is methylation, or it could be through gene environment interaction. So smoking okay. has two different ways of affecting people to have a plant. Okay, yeah. And then... And, uh, yeah, and, yeah. Sorry. And the effect of smoking is the same whether the woman smokes the cigarette herself or she lives in a place where the people smoke. Yeah. Yeah, Active or passive is the same. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, what other uh, environment like um, pesticide? It is uh, linked to the epigenetic uh, as well. Which one? Uh, what? Uh, pesticide. Uh, what is pesticide? Pesticide. 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 Alcohol. Not uh, for uh, for um, <laughs> not every <laughs> not uh, pesticide, pesticide for the uh, agriculture for yeah for agriculture yeah, yeah they could have an effect on the yeah, they could have an effect on the genome yeah. on the epigenome as well yeah yeah they could have an effect any environmental exposure. Yeah. Would that have an effect on the epigenome? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Professor Ajis. Any question? Er, uh, Erli, do you have a question? No. Uh, already, uh, uh, my question already given by the students. Okay. They're smart students. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, if not uh, more question, can I <laughs> give you one more question? Uh, we have we have done uh, some application, some uh, gene 
yeah. uh, but uh, not not um, many gene is uh, uh, is affected to CLP. Uh, I I try to uh, make exome sequencing and send to other uh, uh, to vendor uh, genetic science, yeah. But the problem is uh, I cannot read the the results. <laughs> you cannot interpret the results. Yeah, yeah because uh, we don't have a bioinformatician uh, in our uh, university. So uh, we have six uh, six sample. Ha Is it from one family or different people? Different, different, uh, different classification. To no, I mean, so the six samples are they from the same family or different families? Different, different family. Okay. Yeah. So do you have the okay? You have the data in the VCF, or you have it in FastQ. So in what form did they give you back the data? Because if you have it, we can you can if we can get access to it on the cloud, I can get my student to do the analysis for you. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. I will uh, ask to uh, early to help us <laughs> to send. Yeah, just send me a mail, and we can talk offline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have uh, two, uh, two normal. I, I, I mean the no cleft lip and palate, uh, the healthy uh, people, and then uh, four, four is uh, many kind, of, many kind of uh, cleft lip. One cleft palate only, one cleft lip and palate. And one uh, on the uh, yeah, clip, just clip. send yeah, me okay. a mail with the information, and then yeah. we can talk about how we can get the data. We'll do the analysis for you and identify the variants, if any. Okay, thank you. Not a problem. Yeah, um, Ellie, I think uh, uh, that's enough. Thank you very much uh, for. Uh, the lecture and uh, answer the question our uh, student. Yes, Maybe uh, next we have to uh, join yes, again professor. with other. Uh, yes, Professor. Uh, everyone can join again on another live discussion. Okay. Uh, Maybe uh, it was the last question. So we have reached the end of this live discussion. Uh, to Professor Aziz Butali, uh, do you have any closing statement to all of us, especially to the students that are uh, developing research about genetics or everything about cleft lip and palate? Yeah, so first of all, let me say thank you very much to Ellie for inviting me to be one of the facilitators. And thanks to Professor Annie for, for anchoring the session and also to Thanks to the students, uh, the organizing committee students, I want to appreciate you. So my closing remarks to the dental students and to all those are attending is that um, as a clinician, you have a role to play in the discovery of human genetics, causes of human diseases. And your role is that even if you don't want to be a geneticist, you should be the one to define the clinical problem. So if you play your role very well as a clinician to describe the problem, it, the genetics becomes easier. So genetics without good clinical information goes nowhere. Yeah, yeah. So that's for those that don't want to become scientists. For those that want to become scientists, as a dentist, you can go to any level you want to go to. It's your passion. If you're interested, you will keep moving. And it does not diminish you. You can only be better. I'm a trained dentist. I trained as a dentist. I worked as a dentist for five years before I went into research. But my basic training of it as a dentist is helping my research. I am able to interpret my discovery in the, with using my clinical background. So you guys can become whatever you want to be in research, whether genetics research or clinical research in dentistry. 
it is your personal passion. You decide, whatever you decide, try and be the best and you will be the best. So my passing shot to you is, if I can do this as a dentist, you guys can do better. So best of luck to all of you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so you much, Professor. That was a really good words. Uh, yeah. So and... Do you mind if I take a picture of this? Oh yeah, sure, sure, please, sure. I just want to show my students as well. Okay. Yeah. So Rasid, continue to go to PhD. <laughs> I'm in prof. <laughs> Maybe the student committees can help to take a screenshot too. Yeah. Can you take a screenshot and send it to me? Sure, Professor, I will send it to you. Okay, please. Let's take a picture, all of us together, perhaps, Rashid? Yeah, let's do that, please, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, to the, all the participants, uh, yes. can you open the camera? Okay, maybe we're gonna start. I'm gonna uh, count from three to one, okay? Three, two, one. Dr. Ali. Maybe we can cut the script first. Oh, okay. Turn, cool. Yeah. The dulu di di student committees, please. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. Good. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, maybe once again. Yep. Okay. One, two, three. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, you Professor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Thank you all. Thank Bye. you so much to everyone. Please keep being motivated.